Hello, Smart Bay community. I'm welcoming you in Smart Bed Talks, where we continue learning most common mistakes that can be done uh, when uh, during API testing. Rob Schneider from Wise Clouds, as usual, will help us understand why it is important to avoid doing such mistakes. Uh, hi, Rob. How are you today? I'm doing great. How everybody out there? Hi. Um, so let me give uh, our community members a short overview of the mistakes that we have already discussed. Uh, so community members, feel free to watch uh, those videos uh, if you are interested in, they are located in the current playlist. So Rob and I, uh, we have already discussed uh, uh, why it is a bad idea to uh, focus on to focus only on testing uh, several messages, several common messages in uh, API. After that, uh, we um, explained why uh, we don't need to use hard-coded data uh, in our tests. And uh, one more thing that we uh, discussed was about uh, the isolation uh, of uh, the uh, software, test software testers uh, from the end users. Uh, and today uh, we're going to talk about uh, different types of testing and how to do them together with API. So, right. So, what uh, what uh, topic uh, are we going to cover today, Rob? Well, today's talk is going to be about a really common situation that we see when working with customers of all shapes and sizes, and that is keeping your functional tests separate from your security and load tests. So, what do I mean by that? In most organizations that we see, with the exception of a very few that have leadership that really thinks ahead, most organizations will develop tests. A lot of times they're just unit tests, but even in the, the, the relatively few of the organizations that go beyond that and fully exercise their API testing tools to do functional tests, as in a business process from start to finish as a functional test with maybe five to seven API calls with moving some data between the APIs, that's a functional test, right? And a relative minority of organizations do that. But to make matters worse, kind of piled on top of that, an even smaller percentage will take those functional tests, which represent a business process of some sort, and then subject it to load and or security testing. In most cases, what we see is there are separate groups for functional testing, separate groups often outsourced for load testing and for security testing. So what happens is they will bring in outside experts for load testing and for security testing. These people very often, not always, but very often don't know the applications that the APIs are designed to try to solve. So what they will do is, in the case of security, they will come in and do the standard attacks on your endpoints, but they're doing those in isolation. In other words, one API call has nothing to do with a second API call or a third API call. And that's certainly a valuable thing. That's what you see on security. On load, you'll see them come in and they will do something similar. They will, they will subject your various API endpoints to heavy volume load volume, heavy volumes of load, I should say, and they'll try to see, well, is this API breaking or is that API breaking or are we seeing excessive latency or things like that? That's a problem in both cases because in the case of security, they are testing your APIs in isolation. They don't really know how your business process will behave when the process itself is placed under attack. Now, I'm not arguing for ab abolishing the security tests as they currently stand. And the same thing with load testing. I'm not arguing for abolishing, putting pressure on your endpoints to see if they will collapse under the load. But when you take the hard work you've done in your functional tests and you extend that in a tool like Ready API and SOAP UI where you can, with the click of a mouse, say, turn this functional test into a security scan or turn this functional test into a performance test, you're preserving all of the hard work you did in your functional test design, and you are then subjecting it to a specific set of attacks that will uncover potentially other weaknesses that you wouldn't have seen by going after the individual endpoints from a security perspective. It'll also give you a good indication of how the business process will stand up when you're subjecting it to load rather than just the individual endpoints. So why not reuse the work that you've done 
with your functional tests in a security and load context. That's what we think is a much better practice and will find you problems, will discover problems earlier in the life cycle than waiting till you get to production and finding out that although, for example, the individual endpoints are perfectly fine with sub being subjected to load, when you pull them together in the, a commonly used business process, guess what? It doesn't scale. It has problems. You wouldn't have found that if you didn't reuse the functional test. Mm -hmm. So this sounds reasonable. So uh, this is like, this is somehow related. I suppose this is somehow related with the topic that uh, we have uh, uh, discussed uh, when we use um, user scenarios in our API testing. It is one of the important themes, right? And by using and, and we just add some more tests, some secure tests to these uh, user scenarios. So we do not do these tests just because we need to do secure tests, but we do secure tests because of user scenarios, for, by, by, by following user scenarios. That's right. A lot of the things that we're doing in this series, Tanya, is really kind of tie in together. In other words, dri driving your tests with data and testing realistic scenarios and including the users and their stories in it and reusing functional tests for security and load tests. They all kind of work together. So if you do one of them, you make it easier to do the other ones as well. So yeah, and from a functional perspective, a lot of times you might say, well, why is this the case? Why don't people do reuse their functional tests? And the reason very often is a structural one in the organizations in question. A lot of times what they've done is they have a t functional testing team and they have outsourced the security and the performance testing to specialists. And we do not say that's a bad thing. That's a good thing because the outside experts live and breathe security or performance testing, but they don't live and breathe your functional user environment that you as the tester working inside the organization or as a partner with the organization know better than anybody else. So we're saying these are additive types of things, not replacing them, but add them to your mix and you're going to have a much better chance of finding and fixing problems before they get to production and are harder to find at that point. They're harder to decipher when you get to production and one of these weird little security or performance issues crops up. You won't be able as easily to find it if you are just keeping these things in isolation. Yeah, great. And in this case, yeah, it will be easier. As you said, it's easier to put to the current methodology, for example, to Agile, because you have, you've already set up this API testing, right? And you just add one more kind of entity, uh, if it is kind of possible to say like this. Sure, absolutely. Okay, great. Uh, that was uh, a very uh, interesting mistake uh, that we will need to pay attention to and try to avoid it in our workflow. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Thanks. See you next time. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye.